Diving across to the highest over-under on the week. Not a single game over 50. Houston at Cincinnati. Breaking news minutes before we came on the show, Tom. T Higgins is out this week. How does that affect things for Cincinnati, but also for this matchup? I think we were kind of expecting at least one of the Bengals wide receivers to miss after both Jamar Chase and uh, T Higgins missed yesterday. It's a real shame for Higgins, who had his first 100-yard game of the year. He's only had one game with a touchdown or one game where he scored touchdowns. So he hasn't quite gotten going. But T Higgins, this is just a story of his NFL career, isn't it? It's so many games where he's kind of questionable coming into the week and you have to work out whether you can start him or not. I don't have the stats in front of me, but I feel fairly convinced that Jamar Chase in games without T Higgins sees an absolutely massive workload. Jamar Chase said to reporters that in his head he's approaching it that he's going to be playing, so I think we can count on that. The Texans allow the ninth highest yards per attempt, and Joe Burrow, he's getting hot at the right time of year. You know, he was the QB 26 over the first four weeks, but he's been the QB 8 over the last four weeks. Like It seems like he's really dialed in at the minute, and the Texans... They're, they're a pass funnel. They allow 3.3 yards per carry on defense, which is its second best. But you can get at them through the air. The Bengals, for the other side of things, I think they're going to have to expect a lot of passing attack from the Texans. The Texans are third in pass DVOA. They're 31st in rush DVOA. And their running game's just been hopeless all year. Damian Pierce has been awful. Devin Singletary's been awful. It's just been, I mean, there's no running backs in this game that I'd be excited about starting. Joe Mixon, he's been a top 16 RB for three weeks. He's got touchdowns. Otherwise, he's averaged RB 23. So even though he's kind of getting the workload and stuff, it's fine. Whereas on the other side of the ball, Damian Pierce hasn't even been getting the workload. He's RB 42 in points per game. He's looked miserable out there. He looks like, you know, he can't get into the end zone from inside the five yard. And I'm not sure that we need to try and get crazy here. You know, we've just seen CJ Stroud throw for over 400 yards and five touchdowns. We've seen Nico Collins be very good all year. We've seen Tank Dell be very good all year. And then Dalton Schultz, I, I'm a little bit late to the Dalton Schultz party. I thought that the usage might not be sticky, but he said 27%. He's at a 27% target share over the last four games. Four. Uh, top six games in his last five. So, yeah, we can absolutely load up on Dalton Schultz. And this is a game which I would expect to be very popular for DFS stacks this week. Yeah, it feels like if if Higgins is going to be out, maybe it just condenses the options and, and makes it easier to to kind of stack a, basically attack this matchup. I was looking whilst you were talking there, Tom. So, Jamar Chase, he's played 31 games in his career with T Higgins averaging 18.3 fancy points. In the six games he's played without T Higgins, he scored 22.2 fancy points. So averaging four more points, he sees almost 11 targets a game without T Higgins, averaging 88 yards and a touchdown. So yeah, feels like if if as long as Jamal Chase is healthy, you know, he's, he's dealing with his own bruise on his back. Um, it could be scary if he's out, but fingers crossed it's wheels up for Chase. And yeah, that Chase Burrow stack with plenty of bring back options looks particularly appealing. Um, Martin, one of our members is in the chat. He's saying, uh, is it a Trenton Irwin week with Higgins out? Is there, I guess, a secondary receiver in Cincinnati that you'd be targeting? I don't mind taking shots on Trenton Irwin. If you're if you're in a deep dynasty league or something like that where you know you've got these really big benches, there's a lot of bye weeks going on this week. It's not an easy week to need to be scrabbling around on the wave wire. But I mean, you just you're just looking for a warm body a lot of the time, aren't you? I mean, Trenton Irwin's had eleven receptions so far this year, one red zone target, one deep target. Nothing that's like overly inspiring. He's got a hundred yards on the season, so it's not like we can really lean into it and know what to expect. I can tell you, though, I probably won't be leaning into either of the tight ends because it seems to be a freeway rotation between Irv Smith, Drew Sample, and the other guy, the rookie, Tanner Hudson. Tanner Hudson. Um, Irv Smith had a season-high 26 yards last week. He did get into the end zone, but it's like the volume isn't there. The tight end position for the Bengals is such a rotation, and they just don't really target that position enough to make it worthwhile so I'd rather take a shot on Trenton Irwin than one of the tight ends 
Yeah, if, if you want to get, maybe I'm getting too deep in the weeds here, but Andre Yoshivas, the uh, the big-bodied Princeton rookie, he's, um, you know, an absolute athletic freak. He was big-bodied, ex-decathlete. He's been running sort of 10, 15 snaps a, a week. He's got in the end zone. I don't know for sure, but just the fact that he's that bigger-bodied, maybe he can step in for T Higgins. Um if he can get any sort of usage, maybe he's a, a true dart throw that can get in the end zone. I imagine he's going to be dirt cheap on, on whatever platform you're playing on, probably free on most of your wave wires if you're that desperate.